Me some juicy stuff, yeah? Good, I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> you really. have been showing P off before. Yeah, well, well, okay, I didn't wait. <laughs> but, but that was sort of the that. finished, a more finished product. A more finished product. Today yeah. it's a finished product, which is It's less... like the process from starting to ask for the, the hind legs a yep. little. Mm -hmm. And the horse is say, says no, because that is a problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, he responds with the hind legs, only just maybe not the way we wanted to. No. <laughs> Things like that. Yep. Because that is what we encounter when we're trying to do it. Yep. And uh, uh, it's difficult to explain how you train it if we don't show the process from the start. Yeah. Uh, just most piafs that you see on TV or, or uh, even online uh, are... Uh, far developed yeah and, and and you couldn't and then you try to sort of um, um, mimic the what they are doing mm -hmm. and that is difficult because the horse is not ready yeah then the horse needs to develop all the all the parts of his body and then he needs to be supple and needs to be strong and needs to be balanced obedient mm -hmm. like not obedient, not in the, the creeping obedience, but um, listening yep. to what you're saying yep. and understanding what you want and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we are, uh, we are going to try and show you that horses have different qualities. Uh, so you will see that some horses are energetic uh, and then they have some other flaw. Uh, some horses aren't all that energetic. Uh, sometimes these um, these qualities or faults, depending on what you want to call them, I like to call them qualities, the positive things, and then the, a lack of quality, the negative thing. You will see that sometimes it is necessary for the rider, or sometimes it's necessary for the horse, or other cir circumstances that the horse is developed in a particular way. Mm -hmm. Um, and we are going to try and uh, try and show you guys uh, how you can start different horses in Piaf, and then we will discuss how you can improve the quality from whatever standpoint you have. Mm. Yes, and when the horse reacts in this or that way, it's because. Or, or we can suggest at least the, the, the reason why mm -hmm. the horse reacts in a certain way. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want to roll film. Yeah, and we're starting with um, with the the ones the ho a horse that has never done it before. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We must start with that. So yeah. Well, let's see if we can let's do see, some uh, fun. E e that's the twenty nine thirty four. Ida's sitting here, so this will be fun. <laughs> there we go. And you can see that it, 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 many people would think that Ida is pulling at his reins, but you can see that she's not doing that. She's just sitting still. And she's sitting on her bum and uh, using uh, her, her legs to ask for the hind legs. And Timmy is trying, but he's saying, you know, this is really difficult for me. <laughs> and it, and then it's it's important that uh, that you when you do this you can you must listen to what the horse is saying and the, this horse is saying it loud and clear this is difficult that doesn't mean that it's wrong to ask because the horse must be be allowed to express his feelings he, what is wrong what is difficult mm -hmm. And then we can note, make a note of what is happening. Now the, the horse, what do you see here? What, uh, what is, um, what's the reason why the horse is doing, doing All right. this? Uh, first, what I'm looking at, I, I always start with looking at the hind legs. That's sort of my, the way I do things. And what I see is that whenever he tries to bring them for, forward and carry weight on them, which is, I look at, he brings the legs forward sometimes. Sometimes he will just fall through. So you'll see now in the beginning, you can see that it moves outwards. See that? So it tries to move the hind, right hind in under, but it doesn't come really in under. And then he moves his hind 
end outwards. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really carry on the right hind. Now that right hind came under once. Yeah. And then he and then like, he's like, mm, that's not what I'm after. But then he did it again. And the other time, the second time, I think is more or less of his own volition because I think that he had already <laughs> and he dropped Ida's legs to somewhere. He he's not really <laughs> influenced by them anymore. Uh, and and he tries to. He still tries to get his legs underneath him. Mm -hmm. And now he does some... That's like half half the way to Passage. And then he brings the right hind under again. And then he explodes again. Mm -hmm. So uh, most horses struggle with impulsion from the right hind. Mm -hmm. And so does Timmy. And you can see that the leg doesn't grip forward underneath him. He just steps out to the side. Then he comes under just a little bit, and then he kicks out instantly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really kick out, because that would be too much energy. He doesn't mm -hmm. dare that. So, uh, But most often, when the horse has um, uh, in the leg that the horse doesn't have a lot of impulsion in, less than the other leg, you might say, uh, you will see that there's, uh, there's blockage trouble. So it's not so much that the musculature is stiff or tense. It is that most of the musculature is inactive, but then some of the musculature is too tense. And when energy get to, gets to that point, he kicks out. Because then it might be painful. It, it might be painful, but it doesn't or have difficult. to be painful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very important point for me personally that mm. I don't always find that trouble in the horse means that there's pain because no. you know what when I train myself I find that I'm not in pain when I do my squats but I still suck at some of them mm -hmm. and then you get frustrated yes <laughs> I get frustrated and shouty and that's not because it's painful mm -hmm. it's because I am frustrated that I can't move like mm -hmm. I want to and I don't have to look at myself in a mirror or uh, on a video to know Mm. I can feel that I can't move the way I want to. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm stuck in my own body, mm. sort of. And I want to express more. Yeah. And then my body goes, I can't express anymore. Mm. And then I'm angry with it. Yeah. Uh, and then, luckily, we know many ways to, to take care of that. But yeah. we'll get, get back to more of the... And we can PR see... Anyway. We can, uh, if we can watch the other in, uh, of Ida and Timmy, that is the 2949. Uh, and we can see there, we know about Timmy that he's he's quite tense in his top line. Mm -hmm. So when he has allowed to move forward, his hind legs come under pretty good. And this left one wants to push off. You can see that. <laughs> but uh, but it's not very supple, really. No. So it, it can't not push off. If it's asked to collect, he will step in on this side. See that? Steps towards us with his hind end. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then he blew out his nose and Ida gave him the rein. Yeah, because he tried. He tried and his body uh, responded with releasing some tension. Yeah. And then you just allow him to release some more tension. And of course this horse is not ready for doing the PF. Absolutely not. not. About that. Yep. But, but just like... I Sitting like that and asking for a little more hind leg mm -hmm. is actually helping this horse as well. Yep. Uh, as, as of course, together with all kinds of suppling exercises and balancing and and helping him get stronger where he's weak and stuff stuff like that. Yep. And that is of course the things that we've been talking about forever and ever. Forever and ever with the training scales and everything. Yeah. So yeah. you can see that uh, when when he's sort of when he releases this tension. We'll see where does it release really? Can we see that? Oh, he found the balance. So both hind legs did the correct thing for two strides or so. Yeah. And when they did, the tension released. Mm -hmm. And then instantly Ida lets him yeah. relax and then he relaxes. Yeah. So that means there is no pain. No, no. It goes away instantly mm. when he's relaxing. Cool. Yeah, that's and, uh, interesting. And I learned something. Ida again, because Ida has got the the um, a, a job of taking 
the, the, the green horses that have never done it before and show so that we can show how horses react the first time they're asked to put their he to bend their hind legs yeah. and put them under mm -hmm. and trying to carry a little more weight. Yeah. So it's Ida and Yandar and that is 30, 14. I have this list of videos because we have so many videos to show you today. So we need to to have numbers for them. Ida and Yandar, Norway one. That's Norway <laughs> one. And the cool thing about Yandar is that whenever he's he's asked to 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 collect a little with his hind legs, his his neck becomes very short. <laughs> he's able to get rid of almost all of it. It looks like his head is screwed straight onto the shoulders. And this is it's impressive. And, and this is a, a good example of why it's important also to stretch the horse's uh, neck and <laughs> top line. Yeah. Uh, so so what we can see is here's the same way. The right hind doesn't want to come underneath. So even if that bends a bit when it's on the ground, it never steps forward. Mm -hmm. It never steps past the other leg. You see that? <laughs> okay, That's never. Quite it, it did once. Oh, twice. All right. So, um, but his neck becoming this short means that there is no way this energy can come up through the withers no. yet. Mm -hmm. However, when the horse is so short in the neck, the top line part of the neck and back as this guy is then you will have to have some bend in the hindquarters yes. in order to access mm. more of the flexibility of the neck and back and that is a very important point yeah. and we will see that through the, the whole all, all of the videos yeah. that uh, some of the horses have got lots of stiff points in necks and shoulders uh, necks and shoulders mm -hmm. but as um as long as they sort of move in the way that they're, they're used to uh, with the weight on the fr front legs mm -hmm. that will sort of continue like um, um, a perpetuates the problem. circle uh, yeah yeah so so what we need to is both getting rid of the tension yeah and then teach them how to move in a different way so that they lighten their forehands yep absolutely mm -hmm. very nice yeah, so I learned something one. from that one too. Next, uh, next one is uh, Thea and Promek, and let's start with the 20, 2954. And let's see what we find. A white horse. So, this is a horse that is, he is quite old. He's 22, isn't it? And he has had lots of trouble in his body, but he is starting to move quite well. Yep. And so he tries here to, he does some sort of passage. It's the grand passage, they would say, but only only without the big strides. By grand, I mean he's parked out a little bit in the hind legs when he does his passage strides. So, then we can yeah, see again. So he doesn't push off really hard. Can you see that? He sort of straightens the hind legs just a little bit, but... The, the energy sort of stops. Can you see that? Yeah. When it pushes off with the left hind, which is the one we can see, the energy stops. Now, Thea said, can you bring him under? And he says, yeah, but I got to stop and back up to do that. <laughs> and then he says, I'm going to kick. Nah, wait, I'm not going to kick out anyway. I don't like kicking out. <laughs> I'm old. And then he does a school halt. And then in the school halt, we can see that there's actually impulsion in him. Yeah, and then you can see where his hindquarters is supposed to be. Yeah, so you can see that angle between his knee and his belly. It it opens up. You see, there's a black hole there, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every stride. <laughs> I thought that was funny. but um, And then there he closes that angle. So he should be like that, mm -hmm. only but, all the time. But then he goes away from his hindquarters. Yeah, and when he, yeah, when he steps forward, he goes front leg first but this this uh, transition from the school halt into the short short trot there mm -hmm. that's impulsive there's impulsion yeah. in that and also that's it, this good. is this has been very good for this horse yeah he's been very stiff um in his hindquarters and a daily jogging like that mm -hmm. and of course can um combined with 
other training as well yep. has been very, very good for him. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it's an important point here that uh, when the horse moves at speed, the impact is always bigger. And he doesn't move at speed, so the impact is lower. And that counts for the horse and for the rider. Mm. So if the horse doesn't move perfectly, and <laughs> and he doesn't... No. Um, I, I once heard him described as what? Riding a vending machine? It feels like riding a vending machine. Mm. So you just kick that thing over and it goes... That's what it feels like sometimes. Uh, some oftentimes even. But he's becoming a lot better. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is due to all the little movements. Mm -hmm. Small movements with low impact makes his body better. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could also use the same thing if if you're um, uh, for some reason shy of the energy in the horse. If mm -hmm. you think that's scary or your yeah. body can't handle it mm -hmm. or whatever circumstance it might be, you can also do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that means... This won't develop into a Grand Prix best in the world Passage or Piaf instantly, obviously. But it will still improve the quality of the horse, the quality of the rider, and they will learn things from it. Yeah, because this is an important point. Mm -hmm. We're not doing, we are not doing the Piaf just to, to get to a competition. No. We're, we're using the, the exercise to improve the horse and to have fun with, together with the horse. Mm -hmm. I never competed in the squats either, but I do loads of them. Mm -hmm. They're same, beneficial. Same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Next. So our next video is twenty nine fifty five. Fifty five. Oh, well, first couple of strides, he actually tried to have yeah. impulsion and collection at the same time, and then sometimes he just brings his bum up. So the first couple of strides, pretty good, and then he just says, "No." Can you explain impulsion again, so that it's it? It's easy to understand why is there why why can you see that there is more impulsion in the two first strides? <laughs> uh, because because of the because of the uh, how much the legs grip under and how the different joints move uh, compared to each other. Yeah. And so what happens is that when he kicks off in the first two strides, he pushes his bum underneath mm -hmm. so the musculature on the back of his butt the hamstrings mm -hmm. they obviously you see if this is his um, pelvis yeah, that piece is the pelvis and that is the yes. thigh bone or the femur and then the hamstrings cross over like that and when they when they uh, contract uh, he pushes his bum underneath like that and then he can he lifts his back forward, and that is, uh, if it's not the definition of impulsion, then at least it's definitely so what you need to have in order to have impulsion. So and then the back he can lifts the forehand, and yeah. that is quite obvious to see. Yeah, in that you can see moment. it in the first couple of strides. The the the, the small of his back. What do you call it? The the lumbar spine yeah. looks like it's connected to the pelvis much better than yes. it is just a few strides later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we have a look at that again, we can see that in the first, here we go, one or two strides, and then he starts dropping it. You see that? Mm -hmm. So he finds something resembling a rhythm, but in order to have something resembling a rhythm, he has to turn off the impulsion. Mm -hmm. And this is important that we take all the, all the different qualities that we find in the in the training scales and we use the training scale to analyze the movement we have so mm. that we understand what the movement needs yeah this movement has a little bit of impulsion in the beginning but the rhythm is difficult when impulsion mm. and then impulsion drops off and rhythm comes back mm -hmm. that means that there's something about this rhythm that isn't perfect yet because we can't do it with all the impulsion at the same mm. time, which is kind so of So we just obviously. have to train more. Yes. But not train all that thing, the same thing all the time. No. Of course, we need to vary. Yeah, because if you, it's extremely important that you understand that not all problems require the same hammer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, I want to collect my horse more, <laughs> then that's not always the solution.
-hmm. never never always collect mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so we have to understand when you can do that and that means that for instance if you can have several of the qualities in the training scales in your movement and those movement no those qualities are some qualities that you know your horse struggles with yeah then it is probably good mm. so promic he struggles with impulsion so if you get a transition with good collection and impulsion then it is definitely good yeah for him next one uh, that is uh, 2943 this is going to be a long stream i'm going to talk my head off today and then you're going to be happy maybe so sometimes he tries to move forward with bend in his knees can you see that this is pretty good it is and it's very good for that horse mm. oh oh and it almost he lowers in the in the in the rear you can actually see several times that he lowers his whole hindquarters and that he becomes there we go and that's very good and uh, there's another at least once maybe twice mm. ah it's one more there it's difficult to see in the first strides he tries to keep a bend in his knee while he's pushing off doesn't push off a lot of course when he does that because that's really hard for him and he has been very uh, underdeveloped in his hamstrings too but they are coming along now mm -hmm. so he's building muscle at the age of 22 he's still a youngster this one yeah, I think it's, uh, that's so wonderful. and here the rhythm is even pretty good sometimes yep the couple of strides there good rhythm too and you need to be happy with the, a couple of strides and yeah. then next time there will be three and then mm -hmm. suddenly you have five and then yes and you can yeah. see that uh the, both of the riders we have seen so far they you can see here that when he gets here he's pretty good and he was praised and he moved forward yeah pretty good really good we saw that uh both timmy and yandar also blew out their noses and then they were given the rain yeah very nice so i think uh, we're going to jump to me and Yay. dalton yeah three thousand that is me and dalton and we can look at all our our shortcomings it's always terrible to look at yourself yeah yeah, because I'm wobbling so okay. much. <laughs> but that is the, something the reason I isn't can't that you're do. wobbling, the reason is that it's you. Yeah. When cool. you look at yourself, it feels yeah, because it, horrid. It, it's always annoying to, to watch your faults and you yep. know about them. Yeah. But you can't do anything. Yep. So you can see that he wants to be, have his back as his, the lowest point. Yeah. So still, this is rhythm. Yep. There's a bit of impulsion. But there isn't collection. No. So he wants you need to bend him to the inside. I can see that. Yeah, because he but he he is really he, tense in his neck and shoulders. Mm -hmm. He has been very stiff in like with lots of muscle knots in his uh, yeah. in his neck and yeah. shoulders. Everybody and has been told. Yeah. So yeah, we know yeah, this. But yeah. uh, now he's not that bad in uh, in that area but he still thinks that he you know his what's it called his habit is still there yeah so he doesn't want to try and that is why the rest of the there's the, the rest of the videos is about this horse in first me and then Pele is going to to show you how how to do it <laughs> so what are you seeing Pele I see that I need to moderate what I was saying. This was difficult to see. But maybe you want to join me in uh, in having a look. So when he comes into the Piaf, uh, you will see that his hind legs, the, his knees start bending a little bit. They uh -huh. want to be straight. You see that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they start bending a bit here, about here. Yep. And now when he moves into a better rhythm, you see, mm -hmm. he doesn't push off. When his hind leg hits the so ground, I carrying. think he still sinks through in the knee. Mm -hmm. Which means that when he moves forward, 
it does not come from the hamstrings. It comes from his back. Right. Yeah, that's typical of me, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very. We're learning something in our own stream. This is amazing. Yeah, I it's love fun. it. <laughs> was it possible to see what I was talking about? Yeah. Awesome. They would never say no, of course. <laughs> they would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let my let me have my fun. So <laughs> we can we have lots of videos to see. Right. So yeah, this one was and one, okay. I guess. <laughs> yeah. That was interesting. It's still me. And here, um, he's. I'm, I'm having trouble with uh, sort of, uh, as I usually say, getting all his knuckles in the, the right position because he wants to sort of pull at the inside uh, rein and, and um, become crooked. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to step down in the, in the inside uh, stirrup. Yeah, that's and, uh, not easy no. at all. And now he, but we can see that you actually made a good effort because he was he's almost a little bit lame. Yeah, because you're trying shoulders. to yeah. make him use that right hind left for diagonal, and he really resists that. Yeah. So you can see his right hind comes toward us quite a lot, quite often, instead of stepping diagonally across you see that yeah so what i'm trying here is to do the transition between trot and piaf mm -hmm. and that is really difficult for him because he it's also a very difficult yeah exercise. it is but yeah and then i w what i think is that i don't care so much about the transition i think oh, that good, as though. long as he he's good doing a good job in the gate it's okay mm -hmm. because, because i think it's very important to do the transitions not just um, practice the exercise as a trick because then it's so difficult to move between the different tricks she's she's very right uh, don't like even though it's, that, it's very difficult to do doing the transitions is way more difficult it, it uh, brings several different uh, qualities in that aren't there if you're doing one particular exercise right. for instance yeah. agility yeah. yeah which is defined as keeping the looseness rhythm balance even when you're changing your movement yes. pattern yeah. so if you're changing from longer stride in the trot and more open frame not so much underneath with the hind legs and then what to change into a, a collected trot towards a piaf mm -hmm. then the, the whole outline of the horse will change and to keep balance and to keep rhythm in that transition is mm -hmm. much more difficult yeah, than to keep it in difficult. one and you can see that Dalton, Dalton when I'm trotting mm -hmm. he is letting his hindquarters just dangle behind dangle him. behind and you can see that his uh, his lumbar back is dropping yeah and then it's very difficult for him to go from that mm -hmm. into the piaf without yeah oh. yep. yeah so yes next a, next one is uh, three thousand and five and i don't remember that's all right yeah. let's just take it as it is so you see he's really slow with that right hind and it also has a bit of a jerky movement when it gets off the ground but he's trying to put them under, though. Yes. So I think he's a very good boy. He, absolutely, he's yeah. trying. Because this is so difficult for him. Mm -hmm. You can see that he tenses up. Ugh! And uh, but he he is trying. And I was trying to uh, a little bit in the passage, uh, uh, like like passage like mm -hmm. trot, because his trot is very small. Yep. He is a he's a show jumper type of horse, so he's not yeah. he hasn't got this uh, spectacular. Uh, it's interesting though uh, that I think um, I think when you when you're getting close to the passage, that's what the we could call the half steps. Yeah, something. And the half mm. steps are defined as something like uh, not enough collection to be a piaf and not enough impulsion to be a passage, mm -hmm. but getting closer to both than so a what, regular trot. What I'm trying to do here is teach him uh, to 
collect more mm -hmm. uh, and he does. try to he tries. try to try to 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 find a way to get more suspension. Yeah, he really tries. His hind legs are doing a fairly good job, but he's really blocked in the lower back still. Yeah. So you can see that when he tries to collect, he he needs to sit down so much mm -hmm. for his back to become higher mm -hmm. than his butt yeah. that it is impossible for him to do it. Yeah. But he needs to learn how to find out. And what I'm trying to do is just sit there and just ask the same thing all the time and let him struggle yep. so that he will find it out. It's just like, as I always say, you can't explain to somebody how to walk on a slack line. No. You just have to try it yourself. Yep. Yep. And then you need to let the horse have the time to struggle and it's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying, and, and as the others were doing as well, they were sitting there when Ido and the, her horse mm -hmm. was struggling she just w sat there and waited and mm -hmm. let it, let him try. Absolutely. Mm. It's a, you can't learn uh, to drive a race track real fast without by doing it. doing it really slow very many times. Mm. So shall we try the Let's move on. 3008. That's the last one with me. <coughs> And this is to the left, and he thinks that <clears throat> it's very difficult for him. Yeah, <coughs> so he, the right hind leg of Dolphin is very difficult to engage, and the left hind pogo stick is <laughs> very, very difficult to make into a leg. Yeah. And then he does that. Yeah. Because that is so difficult for him. Yeah. So he tries, but you can see here that several times when he manages, you can see that at, throughout the stride, the whole leg keeps bending. Yeah. and so, what Which is, means he does not push off with the hind leg. And that is a very good thing for it's him a, to do. Yeah, it's very, so I'm very happy with him. Yeah, but, um, it's, but it also means he doesn't push off with the hind leg. Yeah, right, yeah. But he's, uh, um, what I, uh, I, I need is, I need to say that it's diff it's important um, to explain how we are training the PF. We're training the PF by uh, engaging the hind legs mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. and then the horse will not be able to lift his front legs that much in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're not trick training the horse to understand that he's supposed to trot on in spot in the spots. Yeah, that is. Uh, I've we've forgotten to talk about that. It yeah. is important. So that. Oh, that's good. That, yeah. Very nice transition uh, forward. Very nice. Yeah, and oh. then, then I just say, uh, yeah, good boy. Yeah, you even I, told the camera, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think. So we, we need to see, uh, can we see a close-up of that once, uh, that this video once more? So you, we can see that he's uh, he's struggling with coming to the, the outside rain. And uh, so. he's trying to, like, s be tense in his back. Yeah, but all right, all right. And I just continue asking for the hind legs. Not bad. And then pogo stick a few times again. And then you can see also when he pogo sticks, you can see your whole body goes blip blip blip. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I get the migraines right away. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not good for my neck. But it's okay. I, we can take it slowly. And then he, here I needed to go a little sideways because his pogo stick needed to start bending. Yeah. So you can see that sometimes now it pushes off just a little bit. And that's what he needs to do. But he, you can see that the leg just drags. So he struggles with pushing off and keeping his leg bent at the same time. And that is because his back is so short and tense. But this one, now you get some impulsion yeah and then it's really good yeah Very because nice. it was i was happy with Very him nice. there on, on that side yeah yeah okay so we're starting with pillar and that is 3062 oh no is there a question there's a question let's uh, fire the question first so susanna is asking or she's riding first. When I train my horses for the Piaf and Passage, I look for the try and give when I feel something good going on. 
For my elder horse, it's actually steps, whereas my younger only sits and pushes part of the rhythm in his back in the piaf. But there is no forward, but I still reward this. How do you think that the horse knows that it's doing it correct or in a good try? Maybe I'm stopping too soon. Well, that's a that's very, a good very good question. Very it is, good. of course, impossible to answer it correctly. Uh, but uh, this this grips into that whole, uh, whole how does the horse know? Uh, my contention is that the horse knows when it moves correctly because moving correctly is good for the body. And I doesn't, don't mean only that it's good for the body because the body becomes stronger and all that. It means that it feels good for the body. So whenever you get into a good way of moving, you will feel that this is good for my body. And that is, you, you feel that because the body then, or the brain, turns on all the sorts of reward signals Never, and yeah. uh, what do you call all those things? Uh, Hormones. Hormones and uh, endorphins and, and, and all that, all those yeah. things. Mm -hmm. They are all of those are turned on, uh, so the horse will feel then that you're doing a good job. So, uh, but to try and to try and um, uh, get a little bit deeper into the to the answer here. Um, so with one horse there's uh, stepping and that's good, and with one horse it's a little bit of pushing and you can feel the back a little bit. Uh, both of those are good, uh, and. You are allowed to ask the horse to do more. I, I always say it like this. There are people who can ask your horse to do more than you can, and they will have a positive answer. Uh, I'm not saying that I can do it, but I have, I have seen this a thousand times. That if, if, uh, if um, one it's of my... It's just like me, you, when you, you're going to ride my horse we will, afterwards. We will, and, have a look at, yeah. we will have a look at that, and that will explain some of it. But the point is that... Uh, since the horse can do more, you are allowed to try and ask for some more. And then it will be, it needs to be up to your judgment, your own judgment, if that's too much or too little. But if it's too much, you will feel it. You saw with the Ida and also with the with Thea quite quite clearly that the horse thought, oh, that was quite much. And what they did was they just rode on. And the horse was fine with it, and then the horse relaxed as soon as they allowed the horse to relax. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no harm done to any brain or any heart <laughs> or anything like that, I believe, in, in any of those rides that I could see. So what I would do is ask and see what happens. And if, if your horse says, I don't want to do that, then maybe don't ask again. And, and if the horse says, oh, that was really difficult, <laughs> then you can say, okay, uh, you're a good boy, try it maybe later. So you have to try first, and then it needs to be your judgment. The reason I, I emphasize that it needs to be your particular judgment is that it's you doing it. If it was me, there would need to be other judgment, because I don't ride the same way or ride in the same quality or ride whatever. It doesn't matter. There are differences between riders. Mm -hmm. And we need to address the fact that we are not the same, which means that you are the best judge of you. Believe in your own feeling and how you can feel the horse. Uh, one thing I have learned over my now, what, 17 years of teaching horseback riding full time. One thing I've learned is that people almost always feel the correct thing. Mm -hmm. So trust what you can feel. Mm. That's the best I can say to that, I think. Mm -hmm. Good point. We're going to look at me? Yes. Yay! <laughs> I have no idea if it's even good. <laughs> I haven't seen this. Uh, yeah. 3062. So now you're just sitting there and Dalton is like, why is he just sitting there? It's difficult. But you can see already that he's, 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 um, he's, he's connected through his lower back. <laughs> yes. And he thinks it's really difficult. I can't move like this, he says. Yeah. <laughs> and that is because you're so strong in your body. Actually, what I, I, I'm going to have to adjust the idea there. It's not that I'm so immensely strong, but my 
musculature re responds so fast yeah. to every little thing that happens. Yeah. And that, that's always been a thing. Uh, I, I always was fast when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So so it's that my, my body finds equilibrium again. The horse tries to move out of it. Yes. My body goes, no, goes and, straight back into it. And he, the horse goes, holy shit. If he does this with his poker stick, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. then he does this. And now my body just... Yeah, it well, yeah. collapses. Yes. Just like that, I get dizzy right away yeah, just so, by doing this. So you you have to not do that in order to engage the hind legs this much. Mm -hmm. He thinks it's really difficult, and I'm trying trying to the best of my abilities to help him lift his back and engage his hind legs. You see that I give him quite a lot of um, a lot of latitude. He is allowed to move around. He's allowed to wave his front legs in the air. All sorts of things. I try to allow all sorts of things that that don't impede what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And he is allowed to struggle. Yeah, and you can see I'm I'm wearing what some muck boots or some big ass rubber boots. I think. Sorry, sorry. Excuse my language. This I'm Norwegian. <laughs> nah, it's not even that. It's just I'm me. I'm touching the horse sometimes with a stick, and then he says, oh, tries to kick out or doesn't respond really. All right, let's roll the next one. Mm -hmm. This is he's trying hard sometimes, uh, but he doesn't manage all the time. Thirty-seven, seventy-four, thirty, seventy-four, and it's still more of the same. I'm sitting there. So it's a, your body is tell, is sort of the aids of your body is telling him this. Yes. And it's and this is very interesting to see for I guess for people who think that you can do the PF with your hands. So primary aid needs to always be seat and weight. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you need to be as heavy as I am. Of course, that's not the way kind of weight we're talking about. It's the quick response of the body and the, a good a, this is also a good example as to you know praising the horse for trying it, you praise him for trying mm -hmm. but you don't praise what he's doing because he needs to struggle and find out for himself yeah and, and he knows what to do yes it's just he can't he's not able to yeah and so i'm just sitting there and my body says uh this is the way and yeah. then uh, dalton says I can't see the way. <laughs> yeah, but this is so. And then I say, "Listen yeah. to me, then." Mm -hmm. And he's not used to that because your body, as you say, is is wobbly compared yeah. to mine. Yeah. So that means he can keep wobbling his body, mm -hmm. and then he's not asked to do that particular thing. Mm. So this is also one of the things that means that uh, she can't do what I do, mm -hmm. and she can't, and she can't ask those things either. Right? This is important. Mm -hmm. If you ask what I ask, mm -hmm. then you'll be thrown off. Yes, because you'll be it. too slow in your yep. responses, mm -hmm. and and the, and it will be directly dangerous even. Mm -hmm. So it's important. It doesn't mean that I'm a better rider. That's not what we're talking about at all, because we are completely different as mm -hmm. riders. Mm -hmm. But the point is that you need to make sure that you dare trust your own judgment. Try. And if you fail, well, that's fine. You found out. Well, that didn't work. And then and also, you go back and try it again and you say, good boy or girl. And then so also trust somebody else to help because Absolutely. that is what I'm doing when, mm -hmm. whenever we, me and Dalton, we can't go any longer because mm -hmm. now we're stuck. And then you help me with doing things like that. And then it's easy for me again, because then he, he is not that wobbly. And yeah. then he's happy as well, because there is no point for a horse in, in wobbling, because that, that leads to all kinds of painful things. Yeah, mm. I think we need to, uh, I think I need to mention uh, one thing now that, uh, that has always been interesting uh, to me. Not always, but for many years. And it is that when when I had been riding for just a few years, some years, and I started to get get the hang of some things, for instance, those infamous hind legs that I always mm. wanted to <laughs> to get control of, and when I had managed with my at that time best horse to really get him moving the way I wanted with the hind legs, and then I asked Hannah to sit up. 
uh, she would say, it feels like a block of concrete. And that wasn't what I felt. I, <laughs> no. I, I swear to the, all the powers that be, I felt the horse was soft when he moved like that. Mm -hmm. And I still stand by that. The horse was soft when he moved yeah. like that. But I also understood that she could not feel this softness. And it took a long time, but we learned eventually, because when, when she rode my horse then for a while, until she made him could feel that he was soft, and I sat back, it felt like a block of concrete. <laughs> and this was very confusing for us for a long time. Mm -hmm. But we have learned eventually, we, we sort of came around to the fact that I had access to some things that I could ask the horse to do mm -hmm. that Hanna did not. And vice versa. Vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so but at that both. time, we had, n there was no connection between those two things. Mm -hmm. And now there is, of course, quite a good connection. We have a fairly good uh, feeling of what the other person is trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, but we used to not be able to feel it at all, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think this is also an important point. Keep training what you're good at and have someone look at you when you mm, there is more to when learn. you're in doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next is there one? more? 3076. We've got three more to do. Oh. Look at him. He's really thinking. You know, okay, the guy I on can't top? do yeah. that. I can't push. Okay, I have to bend, bend that leg. No, that 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 didn't work. Uh <laughs> He tries all the different things, that's for sure. Yeah. But he, he is really thinking and, and trying to f to do what your your body is telling him, yeah. like information. Yeah, the, it's an important thing here that I'm not I'm not trying the, to get the horse to pee off per se. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said earlier, uh, but there's a there's a tweak, a difference, different thing. But what I'm trying to do is to make him collected and relaxed at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and if he is collected and relaxed at the same time, then we will probably find a piaf. Yeah. That's what I think. Because the like piaf this. is collection and relaxation. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So most of the time when I, when I try to train a horse into a piaf, I find that strength isn't what's lacking. Mm -hmm. You can see here that he's easily able to carry himself on the hind legs mm -hmm. with bent knees, bent hocks, everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes he puts his ass really high in the air. Sometimes he really tries to round himself. Uh, his neck isn't extremely strong, but more than strong enough for this little stride. So what I found is that it is either flexibility or it is uh, an understanding of the right way to move. That is the problem for the horse. Yeah. And knowing the horse, I think it, it, it used to be a lack of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And now he is more flexible. He's getting closer, absolutely. But he still, he at this point he was not sure because he he needed to move in a new way and he didn't yep. know how. No. So Sh then he needs to struggle. Yep. Next Should we one? move on? Yeah. Thirty eighty one. So you can see that the hind legs are way more under. Yeah, and he's much more connected in the lumbar back. So, but he still is not able to lift his front. Uh, but now he's starting. Mm -hmm. Good boy. I haven't seen this. This was much better than I feared. <laughs> yeah. And also his, his front legs don't come as far underneath. No. And you can see how he he looks a little like happy with himself. He's like a little snug. Look at me, I can do this. Look at me go. <laughs> yes. And now I usually say that when he does that, he's like, everybody should do this. All <laughs> horses should do this. Why didn't I do it before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Oh, the, this one was. Yeah. Uh, it shows even better what's going on. There's do do you have another? One, and it, there's it, just it, one more. Is it even better? Yes. Can I see that one too? Yeah. Cool. It's a 3084. 
Amazing. And that's the last one. I was sitting um, and watching this from the side and he really tucked his bum under. Yeah, you can see that it becomes flat in there. Look at that. Oh, but he's struggling though. Yeah, but he's really trying his heart out and yeah, he's so absolutely. happy with it. <laughs> Look at that. He oh. was like, ha, ha. Oh. did you see me? Have you seen me? Mm -hmm. So the diagonals are actually working pretty fine. You can see it becomes wide behind. Mm. That is because he's not flexible enough in the... In the hips? Yeah, in the mm. hips and the lumbar. But he found a rhythm. Mm -hmm. And then he can stay in the PF or the Passage quite for a long time. Because he's so strong. So and you can see the transition there was very good as well because his hindquarters were, were under. <laughs> and then he got his front legs underneath and then he corrected himself and brought them <laughs> forward. But he had to do both at the same time, which isn't <laughs> maybe quite consistent with rhythm. So he's trying to balance <laughs> so under your weight. He's absolutely trying. So you can see here that the transition comes and... His front legs become more and more back, and he's like, mm, no, they should be, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really funny. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. That was cool. That was cool, yeah. All right, so we watched a horse go from butt up to really underneath. Yeah. And we watched various different others doing different things. It's not one particular problem that go but, that is that kind of goes all the way through with all the different horses and riders no, there are but different they, problems yes but all of them were trying to to bend the hind legs a little more yeah and what uh, you can see uh, when watching the the videos all the riders are sitting uh, like trying to sit with their pelvis straight mm -hmm. and with the legs on mm -hmm. quite a little to the back because then you you engage the hind legs more and if you do that the horse will try to to get the hind legs under mm -hmm. and then if you do that the horse will try to start stepping on the hind with the hind legs and then you can see the uh, in the first horses they were not used to that so they found it really difficult yep you can also see that with some of the horses and riders, you can see that there's a thing I need to sort of address that it's um, uh, it's a little bit difficult to follow or understand, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think you can see. Can I be as bold as to ask for... Um, One of the Thea ones, 2955. Let's go with that. So you can see that she's got her legs in the correct position. You see that? Underneath her body. Right? Can we watch uh, the 3081 with me? You can see my legs are further forward, you see that? Mm -hmm. Right, but I still get a lot more engagement from the horse. Mm -hmm. It is possible to sit, uh, let's say, correctly balanced and with your body in the correct position without having the horse respond to your aids mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. uh, so but that needs to be it's a reflection of um, what your the tension or tonus in your body is mm -hmm. and my body of course has very high tonus mm -hmm. so my midsection keeps my spine straight mm -hmm. uh, my upper back keeps my shoulders back mm -hmm. so uh, the whole spine doesn't want to to move mm. soft and smooth mm. and that means that the horse has to respond in some way or other to that mm. 
Mm. Also, of course, I'm heavy, so those two things compound up upon each other. Uh, so, so the horse responds a lot more to my aids. Mm. Uh, but also, I find that when the horse manages to get his body in the right position and is relaxed and active at the same time, my legs drop into the correct position yes. by themselves. Mm. And I thought that was an important point to get. So then the so, horse comes to the contact to the leg as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So even if you can see that uh, Thea's uh, posture mm -hmm. is better than mine, mm -hmm. there is still more response from the horse with my posture. Yeah. So the, the, the look of it alone doesn't tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. There are more things to be told mm -hmm. within that story. Mm-hmm. I thought that was an important point to get across to. Yeah, there are so many interesting things to to look at yep. um, in these uh, videos. And that's a good thing about uh, the fact that we're uh, putting these out. So you know, a copy of it is going to stay there on our page so you can go back and watch it again and again. Because there are many things here to study. And of course, as you, we have said many times, this is not perfect. It's... Um, it's training and then that we hope that that will also give you a, a sort of being a little brave to try this as, as well, because it's not a catastrophe if you if you can't do it right, right away, because you need practice. Oh, my rhythm pra was off. Yeah. You need yeah. practice. It's lots fine. and lots of practice. Yeah. And of course, not practicing the pee off all the time. Uh, Why and not? <laughs> Ride out and make the horse more strong, more balanced and more happy. Yep. And then you're doing this a little once in a while. Cool. I think we're uh, nearing yep. uh, uh, sum up. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we've seen is different horses uh, able and unable to do a piaf. Mm -hmm. uh, even though they are not in any way perfect, they are all able to try. Uh, and trying is quite all right. You're allowed to try. You're allowed to fail on all sorts of things. When I come around and, and uh, you try to show off your piaf and I say, oh, the rhythm needs to be, or it needs more impulsion, or whatever it is that I have to say, that doesn't mean you did wrong. It means that this is where we're at right now. And you, you all are allowed to try things. That's one of my main things. I'm not here to... to um, limit your choices i'm here to expand your choices and the, and the point about the piaf is that it's the piaf is not that hard like m for the muscles of the horse it's not very a uh, heavy exercise it's more a coordination thing yeah you can make it really heavy uh, if you if you sit the horse down a lot mm -hmm. and you ride off with impulsion then it's really yeah, tough when the horse is really bouncing mm, but that yeah. we don't most mm. of us don't do mm. that. You can train it and try try starting the coordination thing without with a not not the youngest horse, but it it, it doesn't need to be very old and very seasoned. Foals pee off nicely. Yeah, they do. So pee off in the hand uh, is uh, often done with the uh, with the youngsters yep. without any problem. Mm. But don't exa exaggerate. Never exaggerate no. anything, no. or always everything. That up to you, really. So yeah, yeah. And we're finished. Next yeah. time is in uh, two weeks, and we're we always um, make these videos right before that. We're expecting spring. frost now. It's going to be really rough. <laughs> so we never know, but we're trying perhaps to to get him to do some pirouettes on Dalton. I didn't know that, but yeah, <laughs> of course. Whatever you ask. Yeah. So, see you next time. <laughs> see you next time with some pirates. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye.